<sighs> back for another unboxing video. And uh, truth be told, I haven't done one of these in about three weeks, which means there's probably 300 packages sitting in my garage and more at the UPS store. Um, and just a quick reminder for you guys, it's not a PO box, even though I said that in the very first video I did one of these. It's, uh, it's a UPS box. So I'll put the address on the screen. I'll put the address in the subscription. If you want to send me anything and I happen to open it here on the show, I will send you a free FSM shirt or hat, as long as you give me your shirt size and address. A um, lot of mail. Haven't opened all of it here on the show just because it's just not possible. Uh, there's too much and nobody wants to watch me unbox three hours worth of stuff for me. That's like standing around the Christmas tree watching everyone open presents but you. I get it. But uh, enough of you seem to enjoy this that I'm going to continue doing them when I have free time and when I'm not working on the caddy, which we'll be back on that here pretty soon. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me once again. Shout out to Guinness for not sponsoring this video. I just love your beer. And um, those of you guys that went to fsmgarage.com to buy the merch, that's huge. Every dollar you spend there, it goes right back into the crankcase of Blast Me. Let's be real. That's pretty much where all of it goes because I can't seem to keep it together. But uh, that's neither here nor there. Let's open some packages. We're going to start right here. Um, got three cameras this time. Let's hope they all last. I bought three new ones because I lost one at the bottom of Lake Ming when we went drag boat racing, but also a couple of these just kept randomly turning off. So that's also where your money went. Um, let's see, this is from Robert Strong or Strang, not sure which, but he's from Jordan Falls, Nebraska. No, oh no, hold on. There's more lines to this address because it's outside of the United States. He's from Canada. That's why I didn't recognize it. My hope is that we're past the 10 millimeter socket and a fruitcake phase because uh, while funny and entertaining, it seemed like for a little while there, people were just going on Amazon, spending three bucks on a socket and sending it to me because it was a good deal on a t-shirt because they knew I'd send them one. Uh, let's see, we got a Haggerty bag here. That's pretty sweet. Got some friends that work there. We've got bluebuzzardperformanceparts.ca. All right, small business, shout them out. They got hats, they got shirts. Oh, there's a letter, there we go, that's what I was looking for. Because that really is the fun part for me is, whoa, this is a long one. Mike, we're sure you got a lot of fan mail and we're not sure what to write, hence why it's so long. <laughs> Robert has been following your work since the mini trucking days in the 90s. Nice. Then he watched the YouTube videos and of course then subscribed to Motor Trend On Demand. I'm his wife, Heather, and also enjoy watching all the roadkill stuff with Robert. Oh, that's cool. Recently started working at somewhat local performance shop called Blue Buzzard Performance Parts, hence the Blue Buzzard hat and t-shirt. Alan Dickel started Blue Buzzard as an extension of his business. Alan's upholstery and auto restoration. Oh, that's cool. It is a really great place to work, which I'm glad to hear if you love cars. Blue Buzzard sells race gear, poly parts, high rod stuff, catered to four wheel drive, upgrades lifts. That's, that's really cool. Thank you for years of entertainment and information. Uh, so long story short, Blue Buzzard, that's probably the third time I've mentioned it. If you guys need parts and you're in Canada, there you go. All right, thank you for the shirt and the hat, I appreciate it. All right, next one. Hey Mike, just wanted to say thank you for all the great content. Me and my son Ben love watching all the Finnegan's Garage episodes. Keep up the good work, man. Just thought I'd send you a couple of old cans that I found at a recent swap meet. From one car guy to another, I hope you enjoy them. Nick Shelton of Allens, Tennessee. Dude, that's really cool. Thank you. What do we got here? I like memorabilia. You know who really likes memorabilia? My friend Travis Nowak has one of the best decorated home garages I've ever seen. That dude takes as much care in the walls of his garage as he does his trucks. And that's saying something because him and his dad are like real good about detailing stuff. Oh dude, it's an old Amico oil drum. That's cool. Look, like this is how old this one is, is you used a can opener 
one of those ones, that, you know, with a little triangle on it, psh, to get it open. That's how old that thing is. It's real old, it doesn't even smell like oil anymore. All right, what's the next one? Let's find out. <laughs> I was I was gonna sit here and say, this looks like a can of Foster's. That's cause it is. This is an old can of Foster's lager with the pull tab. That, um, oh, that's interesting. The bottom of the can has been punched, like an oil can. As if some just total badass was like, well, well, both sides were done, so extreme flow. So my guess is somebody just slugged this thing a long, long time ago and uh, with a quickness. Nice. All right. Thanks, Nick Shelton. I appreciate it. That was cool. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Speaking of merch, dude, new shirt. We've got Jerry Rig University. It's back in a new colorway. I don't know what we're calling it. It's a really cool shade of blue. I like it, and uh, if you want it, you can get it at FSM Garage, because again, when I break blasphemy, that's where the money's going. And this says Smuck Center Fleet Supply. All right. Let's see what's up. It's a shirt. All right. All right. Hey, Mike, I've been a Roadkill fan for quite some time. I stumbled across the Roadkill videos back on YouTube when the first season came out. Nice. Love what you guys do. I've learned a lot <laughs> from doing things the right way and the wrong way, which is mostly what I specialize in, the wrong way. And when you guys were at BIR Minnesota, Back in 2019, I was bummed out that I didn't know about that until the episode came out. I guess next time around, maybe I'll see you guys in Minnesota again. Anyways, me and my buddy of mine have been working on some t-shirts for the auto shop I work at, and it has my 1991 Camaro RS with a blown 383 stroker. Been one of the most expensive projects, and taking on another project. It's more of a budget build project. This one is a 1990 GMC S15, AKA financial disaster. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Yeah, anything with a small block and a supercharger on it is going to cost you some money. Because the reality of a roots blower is you're probably going to put two carburetors on there. And by the time you put a pair of boost reference hollies with the linkage and the fuel lines and all that stuff on it, dude, you're, you know, you're going to spend six, seven grand. Thank you for the shirt. I appreciate it, Corey Bits. Good looking out and good luck with your project. All right, this feels like an Amazon package. Andy World, Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Okay, these are not any old zip ties. These are drunk restraints. These are 12 by 92, no, 12 by 920? What is that, millimeters? I don't know, but they're long. Look how many times it's coiled around. This isn't the kind of thing you probably attach anything to your car with unless you're really stranded somewhere. This is where you just, you know, keep your friends from hurting themselves after they've had a few too many. Always can use them, and they are impressive. Hey Finnegan, fan of Roadkill since it started. Enjoy these zip ties and keep up the good content. Merry Christmas from William Mowry Jr. of Nescopec, PA. What is this? Danish Kringle. What do we got going on here? What kind of delicious snacks are headed my way right now? That's what I want to know. The Gourmet Danish Pastry. Authentic Danish Kringle. Oh, hold on. All right, a gift for you from Jeff Gursky. It says, F the fruitcakes, you deserve better. Slinger, Wisconsin. Jeff Gursky. Slinger. Dude, that's... That's just a great name for a town. Which reminds me of like way back in the day, early 2000s, when forums were huge. Um, there used to be a forum called the Hot Boat Forums, and then that turned into the Performance Boat Forums. And that's where everybody hung out 
if you were in a jet boat in the early 2000s. Legends hung out there, like Steve Brulé from Engine Masters. He hung out there. And um, everybody had a screen name, and then everybody had three or four different aliases <laughs> so that they could talk smack on other people. And uh, one of my friends, who's no longer with us, used to call himself the Slinger. That was his alias. And God, he, could he sling. Oh my God, he was one of the best crap talkers I've ever encountered in my life. It was hysterical. And uh, Roger Rodstrom Jr. was his name. Wish he was still with us, because he was a great guy. Uh, but, but back to the fruitcake. No, sorry, Danish Kringle, not fruitcake. Oh my God. This looks, this looks incredible. <laughs> oh man. That seems safe. Let's just, let's just do that right there. Nice little slice. My kids would be jealous. Oh, so it's fruit filled or something. Look at that in there. See the see the contrasting color in the middle there. Hmm. Yep. Oh, that beats the hell out of fruit cake. Okay. Let it be known. Today's the day, January third, two thousand twenty-three. We've moved beyond fruitcakes. If you're trying to win something or you're trying to one up Jeff Gursky, you better come correct with something even better than the Danish Kringle because this is amazing. Oh God, that's good. All right, I gotta back up off that because this whole video will just be me sitting here eating this. All right, center camera shut off. The left and the right one are still going. It's still got a battery. I don't understand why you shut off camera. Why are you a quitter? It says, uh, hello. Please recycle me. Looks like clothing. Feels like clothing. Okay, there's nothing inside of here to indicate who it's from, but it is a hoodie that says, the father, the son, and the holy goat. Pole Barn Garage, oh, it's a YouTube channel. All right, check it out. I don't know anything about this YouTube channel, but they have a cool hoodie that says the father, the son, and the holy goat. It's called Pole Barn Garage is the YouTube channel. So if you get a moment, check these dudes out. Give them a follow, check out their content. Ass kicking spicy peanuts. <laughs> it's got a donkey. <laughs> All right, a gift for you. Thank you. Got these for you to enjoy with your beer. Merry Christmas for husband from Robin McLemont. Oh no. Uh, Robin, um, I, I'd love to mail your husband a size XK t-shirt, which I'm gonna guess is extra large, but um, there's no address. So uh, my email address will be in the description of this video. If you see this, you know, hit me up with your address so I can pay you back for these peanuts. Let's try them. Ass kicking peanuts. We gotta know. Again, right now, Mike Cotton is at home throwing things at his screen going, what are you doing? Oh, wait, I missed it. It's spicy pickle peanuts, which, I don't know. That's an acquired taste. My wife might be into these. I'm, I like the spice, but the pickle is just throwing me off a little bit there. So I'm gonna quickly, uh, mm. I'm not a fried pickle guy, which I should be, because fried food, how can you not like that? Fried pickles are a staple of uh, cooking here in Georgia, I've discovered, and I'm just not into them. Uh, this is from Michael Giratelli from Greenwood, South Carolina. Mm, no letter, but we got, I believe, a Hot Wheel car. Oh, no way. Okay, Hot Wheels, a timeless toy for all ages. We remember them with fondness, and it is with this sense of nostalgia that we have made the movie metal tributes. Each car is customized to recall a great movie, new or old. We hope that this neat little homage to the offbeat movie takes you back as it did us. Well, what movie is it? Oh, it's Roadkill. Jesus. <laughs> I, <laughs> Okay, so I missed it because I didn't even notice the Roadkill logo. I was so focused on the truck. But the the truck does look like a Mazda RPU. Um, 
the engine just looks way cooler than the one we had in the Maserati, so <laughs> it threw me off. That is sweet. Michael, thank you very much. That is really cool. That almost makes up for the fact that some lowlife stole our actual Mazda, our EPU truck. Uh, this guy's penmanship is about as good as mine. Al something from Richmond, that might be Texas or Virginia. Don't open with a knife, you might slash the contents. Okay, not open with a knife, I will use my finger. You be very careful. Mike, on an episode of Finnegan's Garage, I heard you mention No Effects being your favorite band. It is one of them. I used to work at a concert venue in my town. We hosted No Effects a few times. Once, they used this banner as their backdrop. After the show, they gave it to me and I had them autograph it. Oh, no way. Then I put the date on it. It's been sitting in a drawer for five years. I figured you would get more enjoyment out of this thing than me. Al Williams of Richmond, Texas. Oh, that's cool. Here's El Heffy. Is that Eric Melvin's? Autograph, Fat Mike. Wow, this is cool, man. Dude, Al Williams, thank you. Let me hang it up behind me for the rest of this video. A new and greater backdrop for the rest of this video. Not that the caddy's not cool, but one of my favorite punk bands of all time. Another really cool thing happened to me recently when someone from one of the other greatest punk bands of all time, in my opinion, Pennywise, um, began following me on Instagram and even commented on one of my posts and DM me and I, dude, I was fangirling. Um, shout out to Fletcher, dude, you're the man. Your band is awesome. I've literally grown up listening to Pennywise. True story, I bought Unknown Road, their first CD out the trunk of a car along with um, 40 Ounces to Freedom from Sublime back in the 90s in Huntington Beach and it was awesome. Kekski Cookies, Fort Worth, Texas. Oh wow, are we about to one-up the Danish Pringle? This might just be the most indulgent experience you can have without committing a grievous sin. Whoa. Oh dude, it is cookies. All right, so my friends that know me really well know me that I'm a cookie fiend. I'm not really a birthday cake kind of guy. I like candy, you know, well enough, but really, Good cookies, dude, they get me every time. Oh, there's a note in here. Keep working hard at fixing them. Very awesome, heat and toaster oven, hate me later. All right, Brian, who wears a large shirt, I'm gonna assume you work there, so I'm, that's where I'm gonna send the shirt. And, um, oh my God, look at these. For one, they're huge, like these are thick cookies, but for two, they just look incredible. So we're, we're gonna have to try one. It would be weird and wrong not to. So again, um, you guys are gonna have to watch me eat. Just briefly, just briefly. I mean, if you were here, you'd eat the cookie too, right? I mean, I would. All right, so what is this one called? I don't know. I'm gonna put on my glasses though. I'm gonna read the package. Okay, it's from Kexi Bakery. Cookies be, can be frozen for up to three months. Now, we're not gonna make them last that long. We're just gonna eat them. Zap in the microwave for 15 to 20 seconds for fresh out of the oven feel. This obviously doesn't apply to our cream cookies as microwaving them will make them look like Germanic Saxons after Charlemagne's army was done with them. That's deep. This has a swirl and it, oh, dude, looks amazing. Mmm, mmm, oh my god, wow. Might have to have another bite. It's just as good the second time. Oh my god, that's amazing. Okay, I'm not gonna finish it because that might be one of the best cookies I've ever had. It's moist, it doesn't feel old, it tastes amazing. And the true test of any cookie, does it go good with Guinness? Yes, it does. This one's from Jimmy Morrison of Moody, Alabama. All right, what do we got? God, I love cookies. I'm not a chocolate chip cookie kind of guy though, which is probably weird for most people, but I'm, ah, oh, dude, no, wait, hold on. Kibby and Friends. Hey Mike, I thought you needed a Patreon member only Kibby and Friends hoodie. As a founding member, it only seems right you have one. 
Corn dog is still an a-hole for firing you. <laughs> and in case Rob has left you hanging, here are a couple of Kibby and Friends and Warren custom stickers. Keep up the kick-ass content. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal from Jimmy Morrison. Man, that is really cool, because gotta be honest, although I co-founded the Kibby and Finnegan show, um, yeah, I don't have a hoodie. I don't have stickers either. And uh, Corn Dog did fire me, so. Thank you. Warren Customs. That must be where he works. Dude, that is sweet. Thanks, dude. I appreciate you. I will wear it with pride while uh, cursing my friend whose name comes from a meat on a stick. Uh-oh. There's a sticker over this dude's name and address. Adam Bartholomew from Center Rethland, Vermont, I think. Let me see if I can peel this off a little better so I can make that a little more. Wow, that made it worse. Whipple Creek Racing. All right. Cool name. Dear Finnegan, I first want to thank you for all yours and Freiberger's hard work and dedication. Trust me, no one is more dedicated than that dude right there. Is that battery going dead? Already? 16 minutes into this deal? Whoa. I'll be fast. I seen the Roadkill episode where David and yourself took the Lowrider Impala off-road. Your guy's personality is humbling and humorous at the same time, and closed is what I consider a fair trade, shirt for shirt. The shirts are here to help fill, fund my dream of racing at Lebanon Valley Dragway in New York State. I'm building a 1980 Suzuki GS250T with a Fuji 488C inline twin two-stroke. Dude, that sounds wild. <laughs> Yeah, man. I'll definitely send you a shirt. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Whipple Creek Racing. Established 2022. Oh, dude, there's a YouTube channel, too. Go check out youtube.com forward slash Whipple Creek, which is hard to say. Whipple Creek. And our center GoPro died again. And this battery's about to die. That one's good. All right. Let me put a battery in this one and get that one to work again. We'll be right back. We have three operational cameras. We are back. All right, this is from Timothy Scott of Jindalee, oh, Australia. No way. Dude, shout out to everybody globally that jumps through the hoops to send me something, because that's pretty incredible. I know what a pain in the butt it is to mail stuff even when you are domestic. Sending something from Australia is legit. All right. <laughs> This might be the, okay, hold on. I know earlier I was like, hey, the 10 millimeter socket joke, that's, that's getting a little played out. But this one, this one is impressive. This is an emergency, in case of emergency, 10 millimeter socket kit. You break the glass. Okay, I will allow it. The rest of you, unless you've got something as amazing as this, to send your you know, token 10 millimeter socket, just hold on to it, because you're gonna need it too. I got a bunch of them now. Hey Mike, thanks for all the content over the years. My son Jebby and I, sometimes my wife, love watching Roadkill Faster with Finnegan and Finnegan's Garage. We all enjoy the C10 mini truck build and Blasphemy's Calamities, both the highs and the lows. Me too. I love Drag Week, but being from Australia, I have to go for the Australian Barra Powered Cresta. Shout out to Ben Neal. I love that thing. And the Mustang from Benny's Custom Works and the Skid Factory and the Hall S Garage Chevelle. Uh, dude, I gotta be honest, every person I've come in contact with from Australia, and granted, that's less than a dozen people, um, just good blokes, man. All of them. Ben Neal, super cool. Can't say enough about him. Marty and Moog, I loved hanging out with them. I would love to do it again. Harry Harry, and everyone from Hall S Garage, dude, they're all just good people. And uh, anyway, uh, getting back to the letter, here's a wall mounted in case of emergency break glass 10 millimeter and no fruitcake. Thanks, Tim Scott, he wears a large shirt and he lives in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Kurt Perry from uh, Manchester Park, Illinois, I believe. We have a shirt. Oh, and it is a soft one, which means I will wear it. Uh, you guys at home, I'm a shirt snob. I don't even want to make an apology for it, but I'm a shirt snob. A soft t-shirt is literally the reason why I started the FSM line of apparel. Because a lot of these things, when you get them from car clubs and car part manufacturers, they're just 
you know, they're just not comfortable. That one is, so I will wear it. Hey Mike, I'm a huge fan of yours and I learn a lot of good tech from watching you and Dave and Vice Grip. Always watch Roadkill and Fast with Finnegan and really enjoy your 55, so thanks for all you do, man. I sent you a shirt from my business I started up over a year ago. Trying to make it through just opening up, LOL. Anyway, I take a large, extra large shirt. And thanks for all you do for everyone, man. And if you ever need a lift or tools and you're in Northern Illinois, you can use mine. Sincerely, Kurt Perry. Dude, thank you, Kurt Perry. Um, now that I know this is his business, I want to shout it out to you guys so you guys will, you know, go use them if you ever need work. It's called Dimes Automotive, and the phone number is right there. Ooh, we got artwork. All right, a gift for you. Hi, Mr. Finnegan. I love the job you do on FSM Garage and Roadkill. Wonder if you guys are ever going to make another Maserati from John White of Montoursville, Pennsylvania. I appreciate the art, because this looks like some cool Rat Fink stuff. Um, I don't believe that is Ed Roth's work, but it is just as cool. Check that out. Uh, answer your question, are we ever gonna build another Maserati? I believe we are. Um, a Roadkill fan sent me uh, a DM, I think on Facebook, where he had a baby blue Mazda RPU truck in Texas, and um, it looked like the perfect candidate for us to do something with. In fact, we tried to go road trip to it a few weeks ago, um, and it didn't work out, but it is on our schedule for 2023 to go visit that truck and bring it home. And although we don't have a solid plan for how we would do it, I believe we are going to build a Maserati 2.0. The thing I haven't personally figured out, and I haven't talked to Freiberger about this, is what kind of build should it be? You know, if you remember from the original Maserati episode, the guy that sold it to us, uh, put it mildly, lied, and he said it ran tens, pulled the front wheels off the ground, and he got thrown out of a drag, drag strip. Well, we all know now after you know driving that truck and seeing it, that thing never ran tens. It was never going to run tens. In fact, we, you know, destroyed that 455 volts trying to run tens, and it never wheelied. And but whatever. The joke was it never did any of those things. We still love the truck. We enjoyed it, which is why we're probably going to embark on another Maserati build. But the question is. Do we do it the same, another 455 olds with boat headers in the bed of it, or do we, you know, up our game and do something a little more high performance? You know, there's a lot of things you could do, a lot of directions you could go. Way stronger, better, lighter drivetrains out there. But it would cost more. You know, that that wasn't an expensive truck when we did it. So do you lose the original vibe and try to actually make it run tens? Do you go low profile and hide everything under the bed? Do you go even bigger and taller and batter and headers and a blower and sticking out the bed? I don't know, but I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on it. So leave a comment. Let me know what you think. All right. This is uh, from Amazon. And oh, good. We have a nice. We have an address. Hey, Mike, just wanted to say thanks for all the shows. Roadkill got me through some bad times. I hope you enjoy it. Some cool cars in this movie. Dave Garmley from Scottsdale, Arizona. Dave Garmley, you have mailed me one of the best, worst car movies ever made, The Wraith. And if you guys aren't hip to The Wraith, let me tell you about it. Essentially, a high school kid, maybe he was in his early 20s, I don't know, played by Charlie Sheen, gets murdered. And he comes back to avenge his death against the street race thugs who killed him. And he comes back in the form of like an alien who can turn into a car and the car is this amazing, amazing Dodge Turbo stealth thing. And the cars in the movie are really cool. The characters are just wild. Um, it's, uh, it's just a good movie. You know, it's pretty mindless entertainment, but the cars are cool. The racing is pretty good. And uh, the plot is not horrible. Um, and it's called The Wraith. And the hero car, you know, if nothing else, watch it for the hero car because it's pretty awesome. So thank you for this because I actually don't have this on DVD and I will watch it. And for the record, you guys don't need to go shopping on Amazon and, you know, buy me anything. You can just send me a letter. Like, it's cool either way. But, it, you know, it's not necessary. I know you guys work really hard. And, whoa. <laughs> At the same time, my, um... At the same time my air compressor kicked on was the moment I flipped up this book and um, I 
don't think I can flip it around on YouTube and show it to you, but uh, I'll, I'll describe it as best I can without getting censored. Let me turn off the air compressor. Hold on. This is a coloring book for adults. The title of it is F off. I'm coloring dicks. It's literally... <laughs> It's a coloring book for adults containing 50 stress-relieving, funny dick coloring pages in paisley, henna, and mandala style, whatever that means. I'm not going to turn it around, but if apparently you can get that on Amazon. <laughs> we just set this down, find out who I have to thank. Have fun coloring, sir. Love the videos. Jared Wright from Las Vegas, Nevada. It makes sense that it came from someone from Vegas. It really does. But I do appreciate it. It is funny. I just, I don't want to flip it around here on YouTube because a lot of kids watch this. Uh, moving on. Oh, we got a Klein Tools bottle cap opener. What? Dude, Klein makes great tools. I didn't know they made a bottle opener. That's pretty awesome. What's this? Stand up zipper bags. What is a stand up zipper bag? Oops. Oh, it's for holding tools. All right, it's a two pack of tool bags. Wow, and a bottle opener. Dude, that's really nice of you, thank you. I will definitely use it too. Uh, let's see here. Hey Mike, I use these bags all the time at work. They're great for small tool storage when you're out doing roadkill things. Enjoy, cheers from South Carolina. Joseph Ricard of Lawrence, South Carolina. Joseph, that was really generous of you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Whoa, this is patriotic, look at that. Auto Auction Rehabs of San Marcos, Texas. Okay, there's no letter in this. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, it's a small business that we can give a shout out to. Oh, there is a letter, hold on, sorry. Okay, so, oh, and see that is a soft t-shirt, dude. Auto auction rehabs. We got a C3 Corvette on here. Right on. Let's read the letter. David Royston, auto auction rehabs. Mike, I purchased some of your swag. I'm just starting out with a little shop and a couple of projects. One is a 70 Chevy C10 and a 73 Corvette. They want to make a street and road track car. I am 60 years old, retired, and finally living my dream of being able to work on my favorite project cars. Wow. That's awesome. I don't need you to send a shirt or a hat, but a shout out. And if you have some time, a thumbs up on one of my videos would be fantastic. Happy holidays to you and yours, David Royston, Auto Auction Rehabs. I'm guessing he's got a YouTube channel. It didn't say that, but if you guys get a chance, if you could go check out his YouTube channel and give him a thumbs up, that would be cool. I would appreciate it. Thank you for the shirt. All right, uh, let's see. Bishop of Sunrise, Florida. Aloha, Bobby and Rose with Paula Matt. Dude, I have not seen this. Bobby has a 68 Camaro. Rose has a five-year-old kid. On their first date, they became lovers and fugitives. No way. I like it. When was this made? I've never seen this. I've never even heard of this. This came out in 75. Wow. Dude, watching this tonight. All right. Aloha, Bobby and Rose. Let's read the letter. All right, this comes from Jeff Bishop of Sunrise, Florida. Mike, I'm sending you this because I know you like a good car movie. Yes, I do. After I was injured in an auto accident in 2021, having the Motor Trend shows kept me sane. I was stuck on the couch pre and post surgery for 14 months. Whoa. At my age, the bounce back is more like a thud. My thanks to you, Freiburger Dulcich, and the rest of the gang at Motor Trend. It's a little more obscure than Vanishing Point, Dirty Mary, and Crazy Larry, and Two Lane Blacktop. Yes, it is. I never even heard of it. But Paul Lamatt, hello, American Graffiti, guy's a legend. I'm definitely going to watch it. If you go on the internet and read up on the history of the Camaro in the movie, it's really cool. Again, thanks. Shirt size is an XL. Nice. All right. I got you, Jeff. And I'm glad to hear you are off the couch and playing with cars again. Oh, and there it is. 10 millimeter socket. Not one, not two, not three, but four. We have deep, we have shallow, we have 12 point, we have six point, all the flavors of 10 millimeter socket. 
Hey Mike, love the show. And if you could send me a hide and go seek and a three XL, that would be great. I'm a big boy. Um, Sean Adams of Ripon, Wisconsin. Oh, he also says, now go get my caddy done. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the Caddy, well, and the C10, the Caddy and the C10 are the only cars that anyone ever tries to buy from me. Like, and they're not even done. That's how you know we're onto something good is that the cars aren't done and people are already trying to buy them and, uh, and no, they're not for sale. A&A Enterprises of Covina, California. Oh, no way. <laughs> I grew up racing BMX and skateboarding. Actually, I never raced BMX, just riding. And the movie Rad is timeless, and it's a classic, and it's a feel-good story about a dude who just wants to ride his bike and not go to college. <laughs> and uh, that is a shirt that looks just like the one from the team in the movie. And uh, there's no name, no return address, nothing. So an anonymous thank you to whoever sent that to me. I appreciate it, because that is an awesome movie. Oh, all right. It says Flaming River. I doubt there's a Flaming River part in here, but someone named Andrew Corder definitely had something cool going on one of their projects, because Flaming River makes some pretty nice stuff. What do you think the name Flaming River means? Like. Is it a river where somebody just kept dumping waste oil and fuel and one day it caught on fire and they couldn't put it out? Is that where the name came from? I don't know, I'm just making it up, but if I live there, that's the story I'd be telling. What do we got here? Ooh, dude, it's my logo in a block of plastic that's been 3D printed and that will hold spark plugs. That is awesome. All right, let's see who's this from. 13 Studio Designs, Andrew Corder. Custom 3D printing and data overlay services. Let's read the letter. This would be probably the second or third spark plug organizer I've gotten and I've used them all and I love them and I know it's one of those things that you could probably never have too many of them. Hello, Mike. I've really enjoyed watching your videos over the years and watching everything from roadkill to your own ventures. I wanted to send you something that you can use when you pull spark plugs out after a run. Thank you. Hope you don't mind. I borrowed your logo to put on the part. Like yourself, I want to learn something new, so I made the plunge and started to learn how to 3D print. I've been printing for a couple of years now and trying to diversify my skills to learn more things. I've also been in the racing world for a while now, working with friends, big power race cars. On top of the printing, I do data overlay videos, AOSC, on YouTube. It gives me an opportunity to study data from friends race cars, and I can learn how things happen in tune-ups, and sometimes catch things they don't during a race weekend. Everything from low seven-second streetcars, the current stock block LS records holder, to mid three-second Pro 75 radial cars. If you ever want me to do one for you, feel free to reach out and I can definitely take care of you. This is an item I designed and printed and designed to fit NG case plugs that majority of racing community uses. Keep up the hard work and doing what you're doing. Man, that's cool. Um, I don't know how many of you guys out there have a data logger on your vehicles or have an EFI system that data logs or, or any of that stuff. It, it's, you know, it's fairly high-end stuff um, and it's not cheap, but oh man, the, the stuff you learn from having that available to you is invaluable. Even if you have a poor man's data logger, which is nothing more than your iPhone or a GoPro pointed at a gauge, whether it's your, you know, wideband O2 sensor air fuel ratio gauge, whether it's your fuel pressure gauge, just something so that after you make a pass down a track, or the street, um, and when something goes wrong, you have something to look at to go back and look at and watch the run in real time and figure out why things happen when they happen. Um, I've learned so much from that. Um, and it, it literally kept me from blowing up Blasphemy's engine twice during Hot Rod Drag Week. Um, without the data, we wouldn't have known we needed to put a bigger fuel pump in it. And so, yeah, that, that's pretty cool service that he offers. And even cooler is this thing. Thank you, because I'm definitely going to use it. This is from Spiky Mikey of Sparta, Tennessee. It says Fragile on it. 
Speaking of Fragile, I don't know if you guys heard, but they made another Christmas Story movie. Um, this would be the third one. They made a second one, I think, in the 90s that I don't know how many people even saw it. I wasn't even aware it happened. But they made a, another one, came out right before Christmas, that had almost all of the original cast. Now, a lot of the original cast is no longer with us. Is no longer with us. Like uh, Darren McGavin, who played the dad, he's no longer with us. Um, and I forget the woman's name who played Ralphie's mother. But anyway, long story short, it's really good. If you like the Christmas story, like I do, go see the continuation one, which I think is on HBO Max. It was really good. Spiky Mikey's Center Hill Salsa, medium. Spiky Mikey's Center Hill Salsa, pretty darn hot. Oh, sweet. All right, so this dude makes his own salsa. Let's find out if you guys can buy this anywhere. Ooh, gonna need my glasses for that font. Oh, dude, he's got a cool Firebird. All right, good day, Mike. Mike Sefsik here, or as my friends call me, Spiky Mikey. Been a follower since the Roadkill YouTube days. Enjoy all your shenanigans as well as financing some of your questionable decisions. Thank you for that. <laughs> my very first car was a 65 Caddy Sedan DeVille, and as a kid, my grandmother drove me around in her 61 Caddy, also white. The Roadkill app of you picking it up brought a tear to my eye. I currently have a 98 Ranger I bought new with 350,000 miles on it. Whoa. A 79 Fiat Spider that I got in 83 in my Air Force days, and a 73 Firebird Formula 400. Her name is Stella. What a great name for a car. Maybe one day you can meet her. When I got her, I made her drivable, gave her a sexy new pair of shoes because roadkill. I have a lot of your merch already, so give an extra to the next package you open for her kid or something. Always pay it forward. All right, cool. Dude, Mike's shirt's going to the next guy. You can have two. Enjoy the salsa. I make it and sell it at my local farmer's market. Since I didn't know if you like hot or not, I threw in one of each. No, no, hot salsa is good. And if you're ever up near Sparta, Tennessee and need a garage to work on, call or text me. Um, I don't know if he wants his contact info out there, but since he sells his salsa at the farmer's market, uh, maybe he does. I'll put it in the description of the video. Mike, when the video comes out, if you if you want me to take it off, I will, but I'm, I'm guessing other people wanna try this salsa out. So I'll put it in the video description. And like I said, send me a, an email if you don't want it in there. Judging by the top of the table, it looks like we're running out, but I gotta be honest, we're not. There's six more on the ground here, and then we're gonna cut it off and go do something else because Truth be told, there's about 300 boxes in this garage, and uh, we can't open them all in one video. Ooh, got things. Ooh, we got a sticker, we got a 3D printed ooh, eagle. Hidden motor sparts, and that looks like Maybe a BMW cart? Rust penetrant and inhibitor from AC Delco, okay. Oh, dude, that is a 3D printed Cadillac front end with hooks on it. Maybe for keychains or something? That is cool. All right, let's read the letter. Hey Mike, long time viewer, first time writer. It was awesome to meet you in Bristol for Cletus and Cars event after so many years of watching you guys tear it up. Chatting with you and seeing Game Over in person was probably one of the coolest parts of the weekend. Video and pictures do not do that boat justice versus actually seeing it in person. Man, thank you. Um, I'm with Hidden Motorsports. We have the Texas Speed 6.0 twin turbo red BMW XO cart that we compete in Burnout Rivals with. Anyway, I included a fancy little key rack that I 3D printed known as Caddy Rack. Figured it'd be a nice addition to the garage. Also an Eagle bottle opener with some GM rust spray that is God's liquid and a sticker. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. Keep up all the awesome content. Ethan from Defiance, Ohio. Dude, thank you, Ethan. Small font, must use glasses. Oh, dude, this might be from Sweden. Hold on, Ricard. Kvil Kvist? Kvilst? I can't pronounce it, but Sweden is where this is probably fun from. Which is awesome! <laughs> I love the idea that a country as far away from me as Sweden 
Someone there is watching stuff being made in a little garage here in Georgia. And they care enough to mail things. Oh, oh, hello. We have authentic Swedish candies. These look like, uh, well, these look like monkeys, little red monkeys. They remind me of Swedish fish. And these look like, I don't know. And again, oh, they're cars. They're Swedish cars. And oh, here's some more monkeys and soda pops and cola flascor. I'm guessing that's a cola flavored candy. I don't know, but it's a, uh, it's a worm with a surfboard. <laughs> right in the back, there's a worm with a surfboard. So I wonder like in Sweden, is this something everyone enjoys or is it just for kids and you know you would laugh at an adult getting excited over it? I don't know. But um, we have a 10 millimeter on an extension shoved into a spark plug, and it's a Bosch, on a key ring. That's pretty sweet. And then we have uh, basically a hex driver shoved into there so you can put screwdriver tips in it. And dude, this is really sweet. Greetings from Sweden. I enjoy the content on your channel and you seem like a genuine guy. Thank you. I didn't know what to send, so here's some candy for you and your family to try and a gift I made. Uh, Ogren's Cars, Sweden's most bought car. Ogren's Balar. I don't know what that means. Jungle Roars to give to friends, so must try. Hope you enjoy it, sure size large. Would really like a 10 millimeter hide and go seek hoodie. <laughs> this is from Ricard Kvist, Salvesborg, Sweden, I think. Sorry if I butchered that. I am. Uh, here's my project car. It's something you didn't get in the US, a Volvo 360 GL from 1998. It's a baby Volvo from the Netherlands. I diesel swapped it with a 1.9 liter TDI from a VW and put mechanical injection pump from a Land Rover. I've also done some more bits to it, but the list will be too long and I have plans for it. Okay. Oh, this thing's pretty sweet looking. So it's a four door, I'm guessing hatchback. It's hard to tell if it's a hatchback from here, but it looks fairly sporty. I like the six boat wheels, six spoke wheels, sorry. And yeah, sure enough, Volkswagen diesel under the hood. Nice, dude, thank you. All right, so the only question now is, is uh, which one am I gonna try? My kids love cola, I'll save that one for them. Um, there's the red monkeys that look like Swedish fish. There's the cars of different colors that look like marshmallows. Soda bottles that look like Sour Patch Kids. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for the cars. I'm gonna keep it 100. All right, here we go. This is my first taste of a Bilar. Very chewy. I saw him be chewing a while. All right, I had the blue one. Does the pink taste any different? Let's see. No, all the colors taste the same. Okay. I don't feel like that should represent your country. So let's go for the red Swedish fish colored monkeys. Let's try that one. Hopefully it has a different consistency because these are uh, very rubbery. These taste and feel more like a Swedish fish. Oh, not as good. Hmm. All right. I'm gonna stop there. I feel like we should end on a good note though. Okay, hold on. Let's try the uh, monkey that, it's a monkey holding a monkey. It's called a jungle, I don't know what it's called, but let's try that. We gotta end on a high note here. I don't want everyone thinking candy in Sweden sucks. Oh. Oh, that's horrible. Oh my God. Hey, hey, get out of there. Don't eat my cookie. My dog's eating my good cookie. Meanwhile, I'm choking on the worst candy I've ever had in my life. I, I can't even tell you what that is or what it tastes like. I just, I just know I need to chase it with a cookie because that was awful. Oh, hold on. Okay, whew, that's better, all right. 
I cannot, in my heart of hearts, recommend this to anyone or thing, living or dead, or animal. Like, whew, these are passable. That was genuinely awful. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna shut that over there. I might need another bite of cookie to like put out the flames. Wow. Okay, well, we're still cool over card because these are awesome. All right, Casey Moore of Costa Mesa, California. Costa Mesa, dude, wild stomping grounds. I used to hang out there a lot. Marine Performance Design is in Costa Mesa. Jet Drive Innovators over there. I spent a lot of money at that place. Learned a lot at that place. What we got here? El Toro High School, no way. Dude, that's cool. This looks like a lawnmower motor, piston and rod. We are still your greatest fans. Thank you, Casey Moore, El Toro High School. So you guys, um, if you don't know Casey, how would I describe him to you? Really good guy, built a really cool green van that was mid-engine, who ultimately, I don't remember if he built it and sold it to Slim, or if Slim built it and Casey bought it, but that van is how I met Casey, and it's also how I met Slim, and how you know, Slim was largely responsible for us getting the correct V-Drive that made Stubby Bob do giant wheelies, and Casey is a high school shop teacher in California. And there's his students showing off their keychain projects. This is really cool. And uh, I remember right before I moved from California to Georgia, Freiberger had given me an assignment at Hot Rod Magazine. Um, we tried to test a bunch of carburetors uh, and uh, the test didn't go so well and we were left over with a bunch of carburetors and um, we ended up donating to the, to the high school auto shop there, El Toro High. All right, this is from Anthony Dobrezenecki. Anthony Dobrzynecki of New Lenox, Illinois. I'm sorry if I butchered your name, Anthony. I really am. I didn't mean it. Whoa! Oh, dude. All right. <laughs> that is an actual good rivet gun. Value Rivet HP320. Runs off compressed air. So I know why this arrived in the mail. If you guys haven't seen the video of me struggling to put floors in the rubber duck, I was using a manual rivet gun the whole time. That's one. Which, uh, you know, I don't know, don't eat that. Bell likes desserts. Don't eat that. Uh, I was using a manual rivet gun the whole time, and um, you know, that, that gets old after a while. And so clearly, he sent me this air-powered one for the next time I gotta do rivets. Let's see. Hello, Mike, I've been a longtime follower of you. Your content is great and informative. I recently watched an episode of Finnegan's Garage where you talked about buying an air-powered rivet gun. I've had two for a long time and only used one. The other air rivet gun just sat in my toolbox and I thought, who better to have it than you? My stepson and I have a 1971 Nova SS. I am back halfing installing a 750 cage in it, nice. And looking on putting a big block Chevy in it. But best of the holidays to you and your family. Thank you, Anthony Dobrezenecki. God, I hope I didn't ruin that. I'm sorry about that. P.S. I worked at an auto assembly plant in Chicago for 37 years. If you're ever in Chicago, maybe I can get you a tour of our plant. Ah, oh, that's cool. I would love that. Keep rocking and rolling. Few left. Parts department, Irwin Auto Company, Woodward, Oklahoma. Hey Mike, my name is Brian Williams. Not that Brian Williams from NBC. <laughs> and I sent some paraphernalia from the Chrysler dealer I work for. Note the recycled ATF plus four box. Sorry if that got your hopes up thinking you're getting some ATF. Nah, I'm good, I, I got plenty. I started watching your videos when I came across Roadkill in 2016 or so and immediately jumped over to at Finnegan's Garage on the YouTubes. Fell in love with all your projects, especially the wife's El Camino and the OG ramp truck. When you get back around to working on a mini truck, I think the coolest swap would be a 2.0 TDI Jetta diesel engine. 
I know this note is rambling and all over the place, but I appreciate the content you put out, and my content rambles too. And we'll continue to watch every Sunday as part of my getting ready for church routine. Brian Williams, aka Caveman Stan on YouTube. Oh, so all right, he's on YouTube, Caveman Stan. Let's see what's in here. What do we got? Oh, hello. Got all kinds of things. All right, Irwin Auto Company koozie, air freshener. We got, dude, hats, keychains. We got all kinds of stuff. Man, thank you. Dude, that is awesome. Irwin Auto Company, they got all kinds of swag at their uh, facility. Put that in there so I don't lose everything. Mike McHugh up here, up top in bigger letters. Oh, there it goes. Pet toys, two piece sets. I do have pets. Ah, oh, dude, we got Pittsburgh Steelers dog toys. My dogs are really good at destroying stuff. Those will not last long, but they will enjoy it. I guarantee it. For whatever brief amount of time it takes them to destroy a Pittsburgh Steelers beer bottle, a uh, Santa toy, and a, and a dog bone. It says to Gavin. Okay. I don't know who Gavin is, but Gavin was supposed to get a magic eight ball that somehow ended up in my box. <laughs> a little regifting going on here at Finnegan's Garage. We got a magic eight ball that was uh, supposed to go to somebody named Gavin, but it came here instead. And, um, you know, we're gonna have to ask the magic eight ball for guidance here. Because clearly this was not my gift. Okay, Magic 8 Ball. Are you my present? Cannot predict now. Okay, Magic 8 Ball. Should I re-gift you out of guilt? My sources say no. Okay, so we're keeping you. Sorry, Gavin, uh, your gift is now mine. It happens. Pretty much every year at Christmas, my mom uh, screams when the wrong person opens the present that she put their name on, but didn't mean it. This is from Jeff and Sue Levy of Brooklyn, New York. Levy or Levy, I don't know. They're representing Brooklyn. Ah, I just picture them in their hot rods. We got a Mustang, we got a Jeep Cherokee. Very nice. They look very happy out there playing. Let's read. Dear Mike Finnegan, my wife and I are huge fans, been watching for years. Thank you for keeping me motivated, me and my wife, upgrading and customizing our daily drivers, making them more and more amazing. Our 2000 Mustang GT Warrior is lifted three inches, engine upgraded to 350 horsepower, and frame is reinforced and strengthened, which is why the oversized spare is on the back. It doesn't fit in the trunk. We call him Rebel Scum. We thought people were going to hate a lifted Mustang. Apparently people love him. I guess people are tired of lowered Mustangs wrapped around poles. Ho oh, ho, smack talk. Our 2000 Jeep Cherokee Little Green Monster is not done for show. Everything has been put to the test, especially since it's been under mud and water to the hood and still kicks ass. Can go where the bigger rigs can't fit. We are sending you the three best things, in my opinion, you need when working on your car alone. A magnetic finger to hold those nuts and bolts in tough spots, giant zip ties to hold things in place, and you can never have too many zip ties and they can never be too big. Lastly, a headband to keep the sweat out of your eyes. Thank you for all the entertainment and inspiration, Jeff and Sue Levy. It is a magnetic finger. So, I was today years old when I realized this was a thing. I actually saw this, yeah, it was today on Instagram. I always just, you just put tape around my finger. I never saw an actual sleeve magnetic finger, which is pretty sweet. Let's, let's test it out. Let's put it in there. Okay. Got it. Oh, dude, it is magnetic. Okay. And granted, it's for bolts. You know, it's not necessarily for picking up this heavy knife, but it works. Look at that. Look at that. Sweet. I will use it in good health. And uh, we've got a headband. And whoa! These are also restraining devices. These are. Huge. Oh my god, that's awesome. 
Thank you very much for all of the swag. You are way too generous. I appreciate it. All right, we're getting down to it. Three left. Oh my goodness. More candy. Cadbury Favorites Classiques. Hmm. Interesting way to spell it. Been watching you from Roadkill since episode one. Keep it up. Thought I'd send you some treats from home. P.S. My six-year-old loves you in Freiburger, size extra large. Sugar City, Colorado, Robert McElman. I believe our battery just died in that camera. Wow. I've never even heard of these before. Look at that. Those look tasty. I gotta admit, I'm all candied out for this episode, so I'm not gonna try these now. But don't worry, I will. A sizable box. Okay, we got a letter. Which I will need the specs for. Small font. Hey Mike, thanks for providing all of us like-minded hot rodders with a seemingly endless supply of entertainment. Thank you. Keep up the awesome work. Keeps me excited for the long awaited day that I fire up my 69 Dart. Cool car. I'm 30, I've owned the car for a third of my life and never drove it. Who knew 440 swaps could be so expensive? Enclosed, you'll find some stuff I had lying around that you might, for you, that you might find use for in your travels. Number one, CB radio came out of my wife's wrecked Jeep. She's fine. Should be great for the ramp truck or hauler. Dude, that's cool. This rocker switch panel came from a swap meet, originally in a fire truck or police car. I'm a fire truck electrician. I was going to use it for a project, but that's too far down the endless to-do list, and eBay doesn't let you sell emergency vehicle equipment, so enjoy. Well, I didn't know that. Huh. Didn't know you couldn't sell, like, a light bar on eBay from, you know, a cop car. Last but not least, an open but unused Hick Vision IP camera. Use it to keep your stuff or family safe. I bought it brand new a few years ago, open to set it up, but went with a different model to fit the application. Anyway, I hope this stuff works for you. I love me a CB radio, and no, the ramp truck doesn't have one. As people, modern people, we want things, you know, smaller, cheaper, faster, better. And uh, because of that, we don't always repair things. You know, it comes at a cost. And uh, this CB apparently works, and I would love to make it useful in one of my vehicles so I can talk to like-minded truckers. And this must be the switch panel he was talking about. Oh yeah, look at that. Now that's a sweet, that's a really cool switch panel because it's got fuses built into it. They're 20 amperes, so they're pretty burly. And rotating lights, flashing lights, auxiliary one, take down, left alley, right alley. <laughs> it's got a takedown switch, like you're chasing perps. Take them down. You gotta go to the left alley, the right alley, whatever you need, flashing lights. That thing's sweet. And then a camera which I'm gonna try that out. Thank you very much. All right, and the very last thing we have here is one that really intrigues me because when the UPS called, they said, I thought they said, you need a hand truck. And my wife was the one that was going there that day when I was out of town to pick up the mail. And I told her, I'm like, hey, take my truck because apparently there's something really big there. And boy, were we wrong. Somebody sent a hand truck here. And uh, I don't know who it's from, but it's called the Liberator, apparently. And it looks really cool. My guess is it's from a company, um, but I have no idea how they knew I don't own a hand truck, because I don't. But that looks really cool. It looks like one of those convertible ones where you can put it flat on its back. And you know who will really appreciate this? Is my wife, because a lot of times when I'm out of town, that's when the crates show up. Okay. B, let's see. B and P Manufacturing, Engineered Delivery Products. Hello, Mike, I'm Craig Hewitt. I'm the president of B and P Manufacturing in Cadillac, Michigan. 
We manufacture material handling products and weapon and missile containers for the United States Department of Defense. Missiles. <laughs> we employ 90 people who saw, shear, bend, machine, weld, heat treat, and powder coat steel, aluminum, and stainless steel products. I've enclosed a sampling of some of what we do. We have a few recent online conversations regarding boat parts and the white and pink Cheyenne I had available a while back. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. I really appreciate your willingness to communicate with your viewers on a variety of different topics. In addition to running our company, I'm also restoring a couple of automotive and boat projects at my shop. My first car, he's, hey, he still has his first car, that's rad. A 1970 Plymouth 446 pack Cuda, hello. A 1970 Dodge D100 pickup, along with a 440, as, as well as a 19 foot Spectre jet boat with a 493 Chrysler, which is my Parker, Arizona bucket list boat. Wow. Back 20 years ago, I raced drag boats with the ADBA in River Racer 2 with my first jet boat which was a 1978 Rogers Bonneville TR jet boat. Wow. Then Pro Gas Jet in a Chrysler powered 19 foot monster tunnel and a blown fuel jet place craft without a capsule. So he's crazy. Uh, powered by a 540 inch alcohol motor and a 504 inch nitro motor. We race both classes depending on the size of the field. Wow, this guy's really into jet boats, which is sweet. I really enjoy your online content and your work over the years and felt your home shop could benefit from one of our American-made manufactured products. I'm sure you'll recognize and appreciate the quality and engineering that went into the build these hand trucks. Please accept what we consider will be the last hand truck you will ever own. Dude, thank you. It's got a 600 pound capacity. It is disc brakes? What? Wow. Um, Flat free 10 inch wheels, disc brakes, stair glides. This thing sounds wild. This is not a dolly that you would use to take your trash can to the curb once a week. This is a heavy duty professional tool used by professional delivery drivers that deliver 1500 cases of Budweiser a day. Wow. I'm sure it'll be a great addition to your home shop. Hope it makes lifting and moving heavy items a little easier. Kindest regards, Craig Hewitt from Cadillac, Michigan, BP Manufacturing. Dang, dude, let's open this thing up. <laughs> this sounds amazing. I've never seen disc brakes on a hand truck. The only hand trucks I've ever used had flat tires on them. Not to scratch it. It's a nice unit right there. Oh, dude, it has disc brakes. Check that out. You just squeeze the handle and it stops. Whoa. Okay, he wasn't kidding. That's the nicest hand truck I've ever seen in my life. And thank you, I appreciate it. And, and thank everybody that took the time to mail me a letter or a package or a gag gift, whatever it was. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching Finnegan's Garage. We'll see you next time. I can use this to carry all my loot. <laughs>